before my study in the USA, I discovered uraninite, good uraninite mineralization in uh, Mori quartz veins of the largest molybdenum mining area in Shimano Prefecture. And then I had the uh, exploration experience in Quest Mori deposit, which is more not actually porphyry type, still vein type, but so adding this experience, I really wanted to work on Mori mineralizations. And uh, I mentioned this to both, and uh, my boss, Kachou-san, uh, head of the, my department at uh, mineral sec sections, was very understandable about this, and he gave me rather freedom to use uranium project money to the, my Mori uh, research. When I finish major Daito, Seikyu, Higashiyama, Komaki, uh, top four deposit in Shimane Prefecture, there's one other target area in central Japan, again Japan seaside, which is the Shirakawa village area. So I could go to this with this uh, freehand money, and I studied this. Uh, and uh, there are several small ones between the two sites near the Kyoto and others. That's also I covered. Checking the uh, whole, whole the uh, production of this major mine plus uh, remaining ore reserves, which is a kind of a secret information that our ministry has, I found, as far as the quantity is concerned, mori deposits always occurs in Japan Sea coast. While uh, there are 10 to 15 molybdenite occurrence in South Tungsten province, these mori anomaly and small mines are all drop, dropped out from certain level. So, in another words, they are very small. Two distinct belt, Mori to the north, tungsten, some tin to the south, it becomes very clear if you deal with quantitatively. And the previous metallogenic map of southwest Japan, which is published in 1956 by Dr. Sekine and others, they didn't do quantitative analysis, so whenever they see uh, tungsten, mori, molybdenite occurrences, they put the mark of these minerals. So it's a kind of mixture, there's no clear separation. But the quantitative treatment, we have a very clear uh, two belts. And then there must be, if so, there must be some difference in the host granite, because 97% of mori occurs in uh, granite. Then I have read the uh, petrology's uh, paper, Professor Kojima, his interpretation of this pink biotite granite in the Tungsten province, same pink biotite granite in the Mori province, he said that the same stage of intrusives from the uh, economic geology viewpoint, there's a very clear separated belt, so granite must be different. So I had collected more than 1,000 uh, granite and I have made, uh, I don't know, maybe 200 uh, model analysis in uh, Mori province, but I had no data on the Tungsten province. So I went to the western part and where we had uh, a Hiroshima branch office, they had a field card. I checked the, uh, all the granite rock occurring near, near the uh, ore deposits. I think the total number is 250 samples, something like that. And then pick up typical rock, uh, about maybe 50. And I made a model analysis. I found uh, uh, biggest difference, clearest difference is uh, difference in the contents of the opaques, and uh, it's uh, 
not like a stubby but a round shape so it's obviously magnetite and at the same time I ask the uh, outside the people by money to do major chemistry and uh, five or six months later I received the uh, result and the uh, only difference I saw was ferric ferrous ratio and uh, there's no difference in uh, potassium and uh, sodium ratio which we expect because many people during that time were talking about alkali ratio or this sort of thing to separate the uh, rock types, rock series. But no, no difference. And then I made the polish sections. This magnetite has a hematite rim, hematitic rim, and also secondary hematite along the 1113 base or something. So it means this magnetite at the latest stage, they had uh, more increased uh, oxygen fiercity and it's converted to uh, hematite. You know? So it's a very highly oxidized granite, while the uh, tungsten granite is, uh, has uh, no such phenomenon. So Akira Sasaki analyzed the uh, sulfur isotopes and all these uh, tungsten related one. So the negative rock sulfur isotope. So it's we interpret this is from sedimentary carbon, but there is no visible evidence of uh, sedimentary uh, contaminations like uh, sedimentary generates containing uh, alumina silicate or this sort of things. So Illumina series has a very small amount of opaque oxide that is illuminate. The best word is as you said that magnetite free series is the best but uh, when I translate to Japanese jiteko no nai keiretsu so there's no simple word to say something free yeah. The most important thing is presence and absence of magnetite. And uh, illuminate content is not critical uh, at all. And the more critical is pyrotite. Pyrotite is rare, but if it's a primary pyrotite, of course, it's definitely very reduced in my series. Because of this definition is very very much depends on the magnetite content. Nowadays we can identify two types of two type of granite or volcanic rock, any kind of rock, very easily by magnetic sensibility meter. Very important uh, classification to suggesting suggesting FO2 of the granitic rock. So any Anything, any mineralization related to the uh, oxygen fugacity uh, should be, should have some relation with the uh, post-granitic rock.